This is a simplified overview of the structure of skeletal muscle. Here we see the whole muscle, which would be covered by a layer of connective tissue called epimesium. Each muscle is made up of many fascicles. These are bundles of muscle fiber. These bundles are also covered by connective tissue, uh, which is called paramecium. And here we see the actual muscle fiber, which is what makes up the fascicles. The muscle fibers also have their own layer of connective tissue, and this is called endomesium, covering each individual fiber. On an even smaller scale, we see that the individual muscle fibers contain myofibrils. These, in turn, are made up of thick and thin filaments and are involved in the overall contraction process of the muscle. Here we can see a representation of the sarcomere with some, with some of the basic regions uh, in it. The A-band is a dark middle part of the sarcomere that contains the thick filaments and also the portions of the thin filaments that overlap. The Z-discs are found at the end of the sarcomere and separate one sarcomere from the next. The I-band is the lighter shaded area inside the sarcomere that contains the rest of the thin filaments, but no thick filaments. A Z-disc passes through the center of each I-band. The H-zone is a narrow region in the center of each A-band that contains thick filaments, but has no thin filaments. And the N-line is a region in the center of the H-zone that contains proteins that hold the thick filaments together at the center of the sarcomere. Now we'll take a look at how an action potential traveling down a motor neuron is converted into an actual muscle contraction. As the action potential arrives at the synaptic knob, it opens calcium channels in the membrane, thus allowing calcium in. The increased calcium level causes vesicles inside the synaptic knob to move towards and fuse with the membrane. These vesicles are filled with acetylcholine. Through exocytosis, the acetylcholine inside the vesicles is released into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft then binds with receptors on the motor end plate, causing sodium-potassium channels to open in the motor end plate. As sodium moves into the cell, it causes a depolarization, sending an action potential traveling down the sarcolemma. An enzyme called acetylcholinesterase is found in the synaptic cleft. This enzyme breaks down the acetylcholine into acetyl acid and choline. The acetyl acid is then taken up by the knob and used to make acetylcholine again. As the action potential travels down the sarcolemma, it enters the T-tubules, which stimulates the release of calcium from the terminal cisternae of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcequestrin sequesters and maintains calcium at very high levels inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum. As the released calcium floods in, it covers the thin filaments and binds to the troponin, pulling the tropomyosin off the active site on the actin. The high-energy myosin heads leap to bind onto the exposed active sites on the thin filaments, forming a cross bridge. The myosin head pivots to the low-energy state, releasing ADP and moving the thin filaments over the thick filaments, producing the power stroke. ATP, which has been produced by the mitochondria, binds to the myosin head, causing the head to break free from the active site on the actin. The myosin head becomes energized again as the ATP is converted to ADP. Calcium gets pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and attached to the calcequestrin. This lets tropomyosin cover the active site, which results in the relaxation of the muscle. The end result is that the thin filaments slide over the thick filaments, producing a contraction of the sarcomere. 